Hi, welcome to a new video. In this one, I'm heading towards the Peak District because it's just around about an hour and a half away to the middle of the Peak District from where I live. Um, I've got no direct plan. Um, I should have done this trip a week ago, but unfortunately, because of my spinal problems, I have been bad and I'm just fed up of being in. So we're just doing one night, just myself. Um, I've pinpointed one of the waterfalls. We're heading there and then we'll see where we go. So hope you join me with this one anyway. Let's see what happens. Well, I should never follow Google Maps because it told me to go up this one road, which basically is just a farmer's track. Um, so I've just pulled out uh, by this nice little pond here, which, you know, if you don't know, I love, I actually clean out fish ponds. Not this big, but uh, yeah. Um, so I've just stopped over. There's a mining museum just by me, wherever it is, and there's a stone circle that way. So basically that's where I'm heading. So, well, like I said, an unusual journey. Oh, you now join me at Magpie Mine. Um, basically, like I say, with this trip, um, there was no direction of exactly where I was going. I was heading to a waterfall, uh, but Google took the wrong way, as you've seen. But uh, yeah, it's amazing what you just find when just driving around in places like this. I didn't know this was here. I've come to the Big District several times, and yeah, I mean, it's there's only a, you, you could miss it off the main road, and there's just a little pull in, um, uh, but yeah, I mean, so far I'm just having a quick wander around. It is very windy here, um, so yeah, let's have a wander around. Unfortunately, due to the wind, um, both my microphones were having trouble picking up my voice. So basically, I'm just going to do a little bit of voiceover for you here. Magpie Mine is still well preserved with a good few buildings left. Um, it's just under five miles from Bakewell and just by the, village, the little village of um, Sheldon. Um, the history date back um, over 250 years. Like I said, I didn't know Magpie Mine existed, but that's what this trip was about, is just going to make it up as I go along, really. Um, but what I would say is if you are in the area of Bakewell, it is well worth a visit um, if you're into history and that kind of thing, you know. Parts are very hilly, though, um, which was a bit hard going for me. Um, it's just something to be aware of, really. <laughs> I mean, Magpie Mine is supposedly haunted by three miners um, that were curled in 1833 between a dispute of miners of Maypit Mine and which, deliberate, uh, which they deliberately lit a fire which suffocated the three miners. Now, I don't believe in that kind of thing, but as the site, you know, you can access at any time of day or night, really, you know, because there are no restrictions, let's put it this way, I wouldn't want to come here at night, you know, because, I mean, there, there is really no lighting and it probably would be a little bit spooky, so you, you may think you may see things like that anyway. <laughs> I 
mean, on the site, there just wasn't just Magpie Mine. There was actually a ward enclosure of five lead pipe. <laughs> get that right five lead mines in that including magpie mine dirty red soil great red soil horse steps and my pit mine as well I mean, these good places like this still exist. Um, as we do lose a lot of history around us, um, the mine is actually run by the Peak District Mines Historical Society and was helped out um, by a £74,000 um, lottery fund grant um, that repaired the chimney to make sure it is standing for years to come. I mean, I just love looking around like old ruins and everything else, and especially mines, um, because my actual late grandfather on my mum's side, um, he was actually a miner and um, he lost one of his fingers um, in, in the mining accident. And then also on my father's side, I mean, he grew up in um, Barnsley Way, which there was a lot of mining communities and everything around there as well. Well, as you can see, I'm now back in the camper. I just arrived just in time because uh, basically there was a little shower. So just having a coffee at the moment and then um, deciding what to do. It's about half past one, quarter to two, something like that. So what I'm going to be doing is there's a stone circle about a mile away. So I'm going to go and park up somewhere like that. Um, hopefully get some sunset photography that way uh, because park ups for tonight there are a few but they're off main roads and so uh, you know it's going to be traffic according to park for night but there's one just outside of Bakewell uh, which is 10 minutes away and it's supposed to be by a stream by a bridge and nice views and on the, the start to trails so that's probably where I'm going to be heading so you know but again with this trip it's, it's just to get me out because uh, unfortunately because of my, my spine um, I've had a few problems um, the last week or so um, you know and it, it set me back a little bit you know mentally uh, and physically and uh you know you just got to get out ain't you and i mean like i say visiting this place i wouldn't have even known about it until i drove past so yeah we'll see where we end up in a minute so i hope you stay with me anyway and just while i'm on the subject if you haven't subscribed to the channel and you're new to this and you like what i'm doing please subscribe and please give it a like you know because one that does give me the incentive to actually do all of this as well so um yeah hope you enjoy the rest anyway Again, while filming to camera, um, while I was out, uh, wind noise did cause me a problem and I didn't realise until I got to the van. Well, basically, I got to our below stone circle in Gibb Barrow. It is both privately uh, owned and by English Heritage as well. There is a donation box which is um, recommended a pound per person, which you really should do because it does keep the give to the upkeep of um, everything because you do have to walk through the privately owned farm and through the fields to actually get to the stone circle. I mean, when you talk about um, stone circles, most people think of like Stonehenge, which this place isn't like that. It's um, more like um, we went to a place called Stanton Drew Stone Circles in a previous video. I'll put a link up in the top. Um, so it's it's not that kind of um, stone circle. It is more flatter stones and everything else, you know. But again, it is like I said previously with the mine. You know, it's keeping this um, heritage and history going really. <laughs> Thank you. 
Hobolo is a Neolithic henge monument and it's beautifully set in high moorland with amazing views all around, especially in the sunset light we had this evening. And there are more than 50 white limestone slabs which have now fallen and surround a central cove and all this is surrounded by a bank and a ditch. Um, it, well, I mean it would have looked actually amazing if the stones were still upright. <music> During the excavations between 1901 and 1902, human skeletons were actually found close to the cove and then there were other finds including flint scrapers, bones, antler tools, arrowheads, etc. <music> Barrow here, um, which is only a short walk from the actual um, stone circle. And um, like I say, don't expect absolutely massive. The one thing, um, remember, it is the farmer's field, so there is a lot of cows around. Um, so if you're not that keen on cows, just be wary of that. But they, they, they were fine and everything. Um, like I say, I was coming here for a bit of um, sunset uh, photography. Basically, it's going to get dark soon, so I'm just going to head back because there's not that much I can get anything really nice and uh, we'll head back to the camper and uh, see what we get on the way anyway. Yeah, lovely little place. Um, I didn't get that much video. It was a bit too windy, so I couldn't really talk to the camera as much. Uh, but yeah, nice little place. Um, but because I wanted sunset, like photography um, and a bit more video, yeah, it is pitch going to be pitch black out there. So I didn't really want to do it. I've got no head torch with me because I hadn't took my backpack, stupid me. But yeah, so I'm basically going to drive. It's about 15, 20 minutes max to where I'm going to park up tonight outside of Bakewell. So yeah, um, if I see anything nice on the way, um, we'll get some pictures. So if not, well, whatever, I will see you in a, well, for you, a few seconds, me, about 20 minutes. Well, as I was driving, um, I noticed there was a little stream, so I've just pulled over and just uh, having a look, and not that much. Uh, but, yeah, the one thing, at least I'm out. Yeah, you know, I'm being stuck at home like a lot of the times I am. But, uh, yeah, we'll talk about that later anyway. So, yeah, let's see what pictures we can get here or on the way, because I'm heading towards Bakewell, because I need just a convenience store first, and then off to the park up. So let's see what we can get here anyway. Right, basically I've pulled up um, at the pulling. Um, I'm just not that, well, basically underneath the, I think it's the Monsal Way. It's the one of the old railway lines with the aqueducts and the tunnels and bits and pieces. Now we came here uh, a good few years ago when we was um, camping at one point. If I've got any pictures from that, I'll shove those up on the screen, you know, um, um, as we're talking. Um, but yeah, so basically I've just pulled up here for the night. Um, I've pulled up more down by the aqueduct. I'm not too sure whether you can park down this way. Couldn't park for night, this kind of the way. Um, to do it so uh, but I've pulled up on the side I mean 
uh, for my food tonight I ain't gonna do any cooking segments or anything like that it's gonna be just a, a, a tinned I think about spaghetti and sausages or meatballs or something like that because uh, I can't be asked to cook to be honest fully and that but I, I want to stay warm yeah that'll do I mean, it doesn't look that appetizing, um, but that's what you get for tin stuff. But at the end of the day, I'm just doing this for quickness. Well, now it's cooked, it doesn't look too bad. Well, I mean, this is the sacrifices I make being in uh, the swing gear around. Uh, this is the sacrifices you make being in a small camper um, and like I say I don't have a, a fridge or anything to keep anything fresh in this one because it was more designed around about getting the, the maximum amount of sleeping space as possible and that but you know at the end of the day you know it's something to eat it's warm on what may be a cold night. Unfortunately this year I did want to do a lot more and did want to get out a lot more in this camper um, but unfortunately my health um, just hasn't been the best and I haven't been able to as much. It's at least getting out, this is the thing with it. I mean for, for what it actually cost me, I mean I just pay the um, tax and the insurance which is, you know, it works out around about 50 quid a month and for 50 quid a month, you know, at the end of the day if I use it or if I don't that much, it's there if I want to. Basically um, I watched a, a video um, from a youtuber who does um, camping stuff and that and he put a video on the other day um literally not that far away from here um it's it's saying you need to get out no matter what the weather or anything else i mean with me because of my walking difficulties unfortunately i can't get out as much as i'd like all the time and that's where this camper does come in useful because like now i'm literally you know 20 30 yards away from a trail to start with in the morning you know whereas if i'd got to drive somewhere you know i'm not going to be able to do that you know so yeah um i mean it's not been the best thing i only decided really this morning you know that i was going to come out and that and i mean yes i'm in a lot of pain um you know and it's been very difficult for me i mean like you say what you see on the screen is, is not reality really in, in my case but yeah i mean again thank you for watching this i mean at the end of the day it's me with the photography and uh, just getting out and sharing these things with you you know because again some of you watching this may not be able to get out as well so again thank you for watching um again if you've enjoyed it you know give it a thumbs up um give it a subscribe if you're not subscribed because uh, like i said earlier um yeah subscribing does really help me um because you know it just gives me that incentive to actually get out a little bit more because you know it's not just taking the video it's editing and everything else well again thank you for watching hope you've enjoyed the um, photos and join me for the next one uh, which will be out uh, uh, for me tomorrow morning yeah you know, uh, for sunrise photography so thank you for watching again and goodbye for now um basically um there yeah, now little uh well i'll give you the history in a bit that doesn't sound right and to arbor low and um, stand circle and there's a medieval oh, right now Right, I'm uh, get me in focus, get me in focus, are we in focus? Hey, come on, there we go. Oh. Oh. <laughs>